All right, in this video, I'll be building a fairly large shelf in my laundry room. Now this laundry room project's been going on for a while. You can see I've already measured it out where it's gonna go and it's gonna be about eight feet wide, just a little bit less and about two feet in depth. So the frontage is gonna look like that shelf. To do this, I'm going to frame it up with two by threes and that's why I've made a two and a half inch wide line on my wall already. And then I've obviously got it at the same height as the shelf that's beside it. And sort of a panoramic view, that's what the laundry room looks like right now. And obviously I just drew the two lines on the wall and then used the level to trace them out. Now I'm taking a box cutter and I'm just cutting along the lines where I've already marked it out. So this is a little slow process, so I'll skip most of it. But basically I just took this box cutter, utility knife, whatever, and traced the lines until the uh, knife penetrated just through the drywall. And then I took a hammer, or in some cases the back of the knife, and just uh, smashed out the drywall. So most of the drywall ends up falling back into the wall cavity, but that's fine. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want all the two by threes firmly affixed to the studs behind it. And I also don't really know where the electrical and the plumbing is running back here. So this will make sure that I'm not gonna hit any of that as well. So now I'm just measuring it up for how wide I need it for the two by threes that I'm gonna put in here. And you can see there's some pink on the wall and that's from where I put screws in. Basically I drove a drywall screw into each side and then hit it up with some drywall filler. So now that I've got the two by three cut that I'm gonna put on the back side here, I'm gonna take a another small piece of two by three and I'm just gonna measure out where I'm gonna put the rest of the two by threes that are gonna make up the remainder of the framing of this shelf. Basically, I don't want the framing to be directly in front of a two by four wall stud. And that's just to make it easier to fasten my shelf framing to the wall. And to hold the framing together, I'm using GRK fasteners. And they have a, a bit of a washer type head to them. So they really grab the boards very well and pull everything in extremely tight. So I'm not using any nails in this, it's just these GRK fasteners. So right now I'm just putting in the eight they're gonna go on the inside of the shelf and hold it all together and keep it from flexing downward. And like I said, I measured those up so that they weren't in front of the two by fours in the wall. And then I'm just taking another two of those GRK fasteners and I'm driving those into the two by four studs that are now exposed behind the drywall. I was initially gonna do this with two by twos but I think these two by threes are gonna be a lot stronger. You can get a lot more of these fasteners in there. And because this shelf's almost eight feet wide, it'll prevent any flexing in the middle that a, a two by two might have had. And then obviously for the sides, I'm going to also drill those into the two by fours on the sides and that'll, that'll give it more rigidity as well. And you can see I'm using a level to make sure that the shelf doesn't either tilt backwards or dip down at the front. So everything's level. Obviously you wanna keep using that level throughout this whole process. Now the two by fours on the sides weren't in ideal positions. So I did add a few pieces of uh, two by three just to extend them out a little bit. Now as important as the pieces in the center are, it's these pieces on the end that are really gonna hold things together and prevent the shelf from dipping down. So. I'll be able to put a lot of weight on this thing. You can see I drove two or three screws in pretty much to every, every two by four that is behind the drywall. And now I'm gonna take another two by three and screw it right onto the frontage. So I get a lot of use out of these bar clamps. Normally I'm working by myself, so these bar clamps are a bit of a lifesaver. Obviously clamp it on one end and then I'm just gonna come down from the other end using these GRK fasteners and then just making sure everything lines up. Obviously these two by threes, they're never straight. They're always a little bit bent or warped in some way. So by keeping everything level and then using these clamps, it allows me to just bring everything together and avoid having a, a shelf that looks out of shape. Now I do end up using quite a few of these GRK fasteners and they're not necessarily cheap. I think they're about 26 or $27 for a box of a hundred. And I use pretty much I would say the majority of the box, but they definitely hold things together a lot better than say a small construction screw would. Again, having that washer type head really pulls the boards together very firmly. And once this is all screwed up, 
the framing that my shelf is going to sit on is very strong and i have no concerns about putting a great deal of weight up on this shelf and that's what it looks like you can see i probably cut out a little bit too much drywall but that's not a big deal because i'm gonna put the shelf out a little bit further and what i do is actually take another two by three and just screw it right onto the front as well so that ends up being a double two by three up front and for the shelf itself i'm using half inch plywood and this is a maple plywood and i just have a cutting jig that i made up because i don't have a, a table saw setup that's good for doing full sheets of plywood so i did make this jig i'll throw a link in the description on how i made this and then really i just take the circular saw and cut it out pretty simple and that is 17 inches in width now because the shelf is actually slightly less than eight feet i also use the same cutting jig to reduce the width of it by about a four inches or so. I'm actually gonna put the bottom side of this shelf in first, just so if I need to do any adjustments, I'm gonna adjust the top. I think it'll be easier to move the top around than it would be trying to move the bottom around. And you can see there that I put the second two by three up front. I was just gonna let the shelf cantilever a little bit, but I decided not to. So before I fix the bottom of the shelf to the framing, I'm going to be using some glue. I got some pretty small screws. I think they're gonna hold a little bit better than the small nails that I drive in there. And then obviously the first thing I'm gonna do is put some of this uh, no nails on all the two by three framing for the shelf. And then I'm gonna use these bar clamps in the, uh, the spreader mode and I'm gonna use those on the washer and dryer. You can see that I've put some towels down now so I don't scratch everything up and basically I'm gonna put three screws in each of the corners to hold everything together a little bit better. And then I'm gonna put another three screws in the middle and then everything else, I'm just gonna use the nail gun and shoot those small nails through the maple plywood and up into the two by three framing. So obviously it takes a little bit longer to do the screws and you definitely need to countersink them so you don't have any screws sticking out. So I'm gonna use some wood filler to fill in on top of the screws just like I'm gonna use some wood filler to fill in on top of the nails. So there's the nails. Again, I put in three per board. You can go more or less, there's the screws. Again, I put in three for each of the two by three framing that's behind there. And really that doesn't have to hold much weight. The plywood will provide some rigidity and prevent some flexing in the shelf, I'm sure, but not, not as much as the two by threes. And the two by threes are really, really strong anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. For the top, I just did the exact same, cut it in the same way, cut it the same shape, and then put the no nails glue. I do switch to construction adhesive for the frontage, but I'm just using the no nails for now. I did have to cut some of the drywall out at the top just because the, the wall is not exactly straight, so I had to push the shelf in a little further, but that wasn't that big of a deal. I just took the utility knife or box cutter and just cut a little bit of the drywall back so that I could push the shelf in about an eighth of an inch. And I'm using the exact same fasteners as I did on the bottom. So three screws in each of the, the corners and then shooting nails into all of the two by threes in the framing. And then I'm gonna take some wood filler and fill in all the little nail holes and all of the screw holes. And then I'm gonna let that dry. I do find that you can see the wood filler a little bit more on the plywood than you can on the solid maple boards. The solid maple boards, it completely disappears. And then on the plywood, you could still, it, it makes a bit of a light spot, which I wasn't too happy with, but it's not that big of a deal. Now I'm using a four inch maple board up front. So it looks like it's all a solid maple shelf. Obviously I just cut it to length with the miter saw and I'm gonna use just a sander to sand it down to the proper width. So it's only off by less than an eighth of an inch for the width. So it's a little bit larger than I want it. Um, but I just use this palm sander, this Makita and takes a little bit of time, but I don't have to worry about running it through a table saw and getting any damage on it, that kind of thing. So 15 minutes with the palm sander and then it's right down to the right width and good to attach. And then at the same time, I did sand the board outside, so it's pre-sanded as well. Now to fix this maple board to the front, I'm using construction adhesive because I ran out of the no nails glue. This is a bit of a messier process than the no nails glue for whatever reason. And then I'm gonna use actually a smaller nail, just a brad nail on the frontage. And again, I'm gonna use these bar clamps just because nothing's perfectly straight. 
um, it'll help me pull everything in so that it's nicely lined up and so that there's no deviations across the, the shelf with this solid maple board either higher or lower than the shelf around it. So really I'm just moving the bar clamp down and then shooting in a couple of nails here and there. Probably end up putting in about 20. And I'm shooting these nails through the maple board and into the plywood behind it because they're, the two by threes are back a little bit. I wouldn't be able to catch the two by threes with the nail gun. And you can see all of the wood filler is now on those nail holes and on the top as well. So I'm just waiting for that to dry and I'll just take some 150 grit and sand off all the filler. So you can see there it is all sanded down and I've taped up the wall so I don't get stain all over it, which I do anyway. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lay down some wood conditioner, then two coats of stain. And the last thing I'm gonna do is three coats of the clear coat. And for this, I'm just using foam brushes. And then I do end up using some towels to wipe up the stain. So for the pre-stain conditioner, it just paints on, nothing special. It is a little bit runny, so it will drip, especially when you're working overhead. So just be careful with that. I do end up putting on gloves when I'm doing the overhead work. So I just find that it runs down the brush and onto the handle. And then you let that dry for about 15 minutes or so. It really depends on which type of product you're using and it'll say on the instructions anyway. So for the stain, you can obviously see that I've already done the top and I'm just letting it sit for a while. I'm not letting it dry out because you need to wipe the stain off in order for you to get a smooth finish, unless you used a towel to apply it, in which case it might be good from the start. But because I'm using these brushes, I do need to come around with a towel and wipe it off. Nothing fancy here, just paint it on like you would painting a wall. And then after about 10 or 15 minutes, I just come around with the, a towel that I don't mind throwing out later and do a good job of wiping off all the excess stain. So anything that didn't penetrate into the wood just needs to get wiped off. And then you just let it sit for about, I let it sit for about six hours. So after I wiped it off, I actually came back the next day and did the, the second coat of stain. So that's the first day. And then obviously I didn't film it being applied again. That's what it looks like on the second day. And there you can see what the nail holes look like. So you can see them if you know where to look. But if you just walk into the room like a normal person and you're not looking for brad nails, then it's not that big of a deal. So like I said, I'm using this Verithane Clear Finish Semi-Gloss. And one of the things they say about these things is you're not supposed to shake them to stir them up. You're supposed to use a stir stick. I don't know why. I don't know if it's an issue of getting bubbles in the clear coat, but I followed the instructions and used the stir stick rather than shaking it up. And just like the stain and the pre-stain conditioner, I'm just using one of these foam brushes and it really just gets painted on. The one thing you have to keep in mind is you need to work fairly quick because it starts getting tacky fairly quick, maybe within five minutes of laying it down, you'll, you'll feel the foam brush start to catch on the tackiness of where you've already put it down. So you gotta work quickly and efficiently so that it doesn't start drying up on you. And that's what it looks like after one coat. Uh, normally you are supposed to sand in between coats, although it says you don't necessarily have to. In the past, I have used the palm sander on the clear coat. However, I find it does get a little bit aggressive and you don't wanna burn through the clear coat because then the next thing you're gonna do is start removing some of the finish that's underneath the clear coat. And that's what it looks like after the second coat of clear coat. And before doing the clear coat, I let it sit again for about six hours. If you don't let the stain set for the six hours, you could get the stain sort of getting picked up into the clear coat and making it look hazy. So that's what it looks like after a third coat after sanding it with 320 grit. And you can see I messed up on the front a little bit. I got a bit of a run. So I do the front again. So I do have to re-sand it just lightly. I don't sand everything off. And then I do another coat of clear coat. So it looks like that. So anyway, that's how I put together this shelf in my laundry room. It's not perfect. I do end up repainting the walls. You can see I made a bit of a mess. But it is a big shelf, it's going to hold a lot of things, and it is a utility shelf, so it is going to get beat up a little bit with people throwing bins and stuff on top of it. So there it is after I have fully painted the side walls, obviously I made lots of drips, and then I've also fully painted the back walls, and I've come through and I did put some dents in the drywall, so I filled those as well. 
anyway, that's the, the finished product of my first major shelf in my laundry room. And o overall, it took a little bit of time. The construction of it was pretty fast. Honestly, the staining of it took probably longer than the construction of the shelf itself. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.